Good morning, kids and big kids. Um, Lou here, and uh, been settling into uh, my work day, and uh, wanted to check in and um, let me turn this down a little bit. I've been listening to Bob Wayne lately. Anyway, um, my friend Amy Estelle on my um, Facebook feed plays bass for Bob Wayne, and she's going on tour this week. She'll be on tour in California and other places west. And uh, I think it's jam. Really do. Anyways, um, I don't know if any of you guys recognize it, but this is the t-shirt I wore for um, my whole entire bike trip to uh, Texas last, I think I left in, I think it was September. And um, I've been thinking a lot about Stupid Fest this coming October. And I don't remember exactly the dates of it. They were bouncing around, but October is a funny month because when you're when you're uh, riding out and back, um, your out and backs can be. I mean, it can be really cold. Um, so this last trip I took in February, last day of February, I left on the 28th and was back on March uh, 15th or something like that. Um, oh, October 12th to 14th. So that's going to put me coming home in the in the, the uh, last half of October. Thanks, Brian, good to see you here. Jeff Haynes, good to see you too. Um, so uh, those, those trips can get really, they can get really cold. And uh, cold's not that big a problem. I, uh, I, I realized it's snow and rain and cold. Um, cold and hot, or uh, rainy and hot, that's like, you know, that's a doer. But man, you get into the, uh, you get into that uh, cold with wet conditions and man, like, you got a loose sickle on a motorcycle going on there. That's not that's not fun. But today I am uh, I am running a uh, running a couple of new shape templates through, and uh, one of them is for South Austin Curb Service, which is getting its own shape. Um, and that one's on the table right now here in front of me, um, working up a a. Uh, a shape for South Austin to get a, a special curb service only shape this, um, with slappies in mind and I'm working with Jason Wren on that it's gonna be a 14 and a half inch wheelbase with generous nose and tail properly pocketed on the kicks and um, it's gonna be a uh, squarish sort of board with a little bit of dimensionality to it, a little bit of spice um, not a plain Jane square board but uh, Square boards and a relatively, uh, relatively straight rail on it. Um, special slappy curb crushing machines for South Austin, and um, I reckon I'll have to make it in two sizes. Um, but I only want to make it in one size. <laughs> I just want to make it nine inches wide, and uh, I like I like nine inches wide. That's a good that's a good width, and um, so I'm working on South Austin, and I'm working on a special deck for. Stupid Fest, which uh, I thought, I always, it's always like this, I always think I'm gonna be way further ahead than I am, uh, because there's a, um, there's a perfect world concept of how long it takes to do things, and then there's the real world concept, and then there is the dynamically chaotic world uh, that uh, I live in, and I have not found a way to keep my, my life from feeling pretty darn dynamic, because things, uh, Things have, uh, oh, those South Austin boards will be available um, everywhere. They'll be on the site as well as uh, shipping out to South Austin. So um, South Austin Curb Service is uh, one of my favorite projects I uh, really enjoy. And they, they are at very low, like it's been very low key with South Austin, just, just really all about what it should be all about. Hey guys, I'm gonna turn off the dehumidifier really quick. Um, I don't, uh, I don't, en I don't enjoy the noise of the dehumidifier, um, pesky. So anyway, um, working on two new shapes while I'm uh, packing up some stuff and uh, continuing to, uh, to do this, uh, this thing in here. And uh, let's see. Yes, it always takes longer than it takes, Sam Cook. Who knows? Love you, buddy. Good to see you on here, Sam. Um, 
Yeah, Sam and his family have been through some dynamic times recently with uh, auto accidents and uh, things like that. And you all know how life can come up and bite you. And um, I'm just plugging away at it. And uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm working on these, these new shape templates and they're gonna make a whole bunch of boards. And the way it goes with shapes, I mean, uh, I'll make a shape and then about a, you know, a year later, maybe six months later, I'll tweak it. You know, I'm um, about to make some tweaks to the pan head. Um, I want the pan head to have a little bit narrower nose profile on it, but I don't want it to have a narrow nose. I like a boaty nose on my stuff. I like a shovel on the front. Um, so uh, I'll be playing around with pan heads and maybe sometime in fall, I'll come out with a revised, you know, 2018 version of the pan head. The, the knuckle head went through I think three or four, you know, different iterations before it became the, the present shape it is. And um, Knucklehead's funny, I think it's my only board with a 1475 wheelbase. Um, but the uh, South Austins are gonna be on a 14.5. Now the Stupid Fest board, I'm gonna make a couple of concept pieces and float them out in the ether on the, on the Never Was uh, page and see how folks like them. Um, but I'm, I mean, I've got a lot of different, um, I have a lot of different jigs for making different shapes. Like if, if I want to scallop something, I've got a couple of ways to, to run scallops um, on things that are going to meet different blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm embarrassed when I talk like that because I'm really not very high tech, uh, especially not compared to some of the really super super amazing board makers out there who I uh, like Sam Cook and um, who have like really and you know they've got really good tools and, and uh, really good precision in their in their stuff um, I don't think the final product is always less precise but the process that I use is very intuitive and very uh, hard to duplicate my jigs are all done by hand and eye so, you know, like when someone comes in and I, you know, like put the template on top of a uncut and then I go through, uh, yeah, um, sorry, I'm reading some of your comments and they're, and they're cool. I, but, uh, I get, uh, I've had people in and taught people to make boards and I realize, oh, well, like this is not really the way to teach someone to make a board, uh, because the, the process relies on a certain, um, a certain eye for what a skateboard like ought to look like and I just have that in my mind and in my heart you know and it's it's uh, I'm not just going by gut I just I know what a good tail looks like on a deck and um, <clears throat> I mean what is good you know good to me I know what looks good to me for a tail on a deck that's what I mean you know and any deck that's getting skateboarded on is a winner. It doesn't matter, you know. You're gonna see me just really crushing on a lot of different, you know. Um, you know, I'm really not excited about the 20-year uh, result of factory production, mass production, and, in, you know, in, as uh, I think uh, Jim Gray puts it, incestuous industry culture, <laughs> you know. Um, I don't like that, and so you'll see me, uh, you'll see me crit criticizing it really strongly, but um, that doesn't mean that when I'm skating with people and they're riding on a beautiful, colorful board and they're enjoying riding their skateboard that there's anything about that that's a bummer at all. You know, it's not like, you know, when you show up to a spot and you're riding the wrong brand or your shop brand board is the wrong shop brand board and the other shop guys are there or something like that. I, I hope none of you guys live in a place where that stuff goes on at all. I really do. I, I hope that if, uh, you know, if, if I say anything about that, that you know nothing about what I'm talking about. But in, uh, in Indiana and Ohio, those are, those are common occurrences, you know, that you're a kook because you're on the wrong brand board or you're a kook because you're wearing the wrong shops, hoodie, uh, or, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, those days, hopefully, they're soon to be far behind us, you know. There's so much stoke, you know, in you know, moving forward. But 
Um, you'll hear me, you know, I'm going to spoof that real hard until, you know, till I'm, you know, that, that needs to be spoofed, but, but I'm, uh, I'm, uh, definitely not, uh, bummed on any deck that you're actually riding on. If you're stoked, I'm stoked, you know, um, in industry stuff is different than when we're skating together. Riding, riding the darn things is a complete free-for-all, you know? It doesn't matter if you're riding a skateboard and I'm riding a skateboard what you're riding, you know? I mean, I, I found, a, uh, found a lot of, lot of joy in uh, just riding skateboards with people and um, a lot of good memories. But anyways, I'm working on these shapes and, and doing some template origination, um, combining uh, some combining some aspects of different shapes with other shapes and playing around with different widths and stuff like that. And that's the beginning of my day over here um, and listening to Bob Wayne and uh, thinking about all my friends. So um, it's supposed to snow tonight. I think it's like April or something. I think it's April 6th. And uh, it's supposed to snow tonight, and it was in the 20s yesterday. And uh, I don't know. I I feel like I'm just trying to find a way to enjoy it. Um, and uh, this is w one of the best. Is <laughs> sitting in here doing this, and then uh, and I'm cutting batches and doing stuff, and uh, making making the skateboards, just making the donuts. And uh, I hope that all of you have a great, safe day, uh, kids and big kids out there. And um, let's ride skateboards together as soon as we can. And uh, if any of you are coming through Cincinnati, come and get a tour here. I feel like there was something else I wanted to talk about. I did want to mention something. That today was a double Kistner morning. D. Kistner is a knife maker in Tennessee. And um, while his knives are not, they're not low end hardware store knives at all. They're, they're serious, like super good knives. Uh, D one time sent me as a gift this beautiful little knife, and I've shown it before, but um, D sent me this, and uh, it's, this is the old scribe knife of old school carpenters, and you can see that from this ancient knife, you know, this is the, this is the knife that, see how he wrote fickle on it? It's backward to you guys. Um, he, he, he uh, I don't know if, I think he etched that. I think he etched it in there. I don't, it looks like an etching. Um, Cause it's not, he didn't grind it out. It's got too clear a margin. So he, he put fickle into the, uh, there you go. He put fickle into the blade and uh, it's made with really good high carbon steel, easy to, easy to uh, hone and sharpen. And it says Kistner, can you make it out right there? It says Kistner on it. And uh, you can see how the modern um, utility knife gets its shape from this knife. And uh, it's a really good little shank. And he even included with it, I'm, ner I'm sorry guys, I'm knife nerding. <laughs> he even made a Kydex sheath for it. That is, it's terrific. I leave the sheath off it and I put it over here on my, on my, uh, my toolbar. Uh, on my bench. So I, I was using that one to cut these out. The scribe knife comes out and I actually, I do, I do the cutting that way and then I sand uh, on, the, on the sanders to get the uh, plastic template to be, uh, you know, more perfect around the edges. And then my, uh, my daily carry knife uh, is on my belt and it's this glorious hammer of a knife. Um, 3 16 of an inch uh, wide steel, really, really stout beautiful working knife and I, I hone it every day um, at the house it's therapy you know uh, I hone it with a with a steel at the house and it's a uh, it's a high carbon content German steel blade with uh, it's uh, it's gorgeous and you can see all of his knives come with his imprimatur again it's backward because I'm on the reverse camera but um, I just I love the I love the hand rendering on these knives and I love the way that I D is someone that I I almost stayed with D in Tennessee uh, on my last trip I was uh, I was I got cold and exhausted and sick at the end of my last trip um, which is okay so it 
the way that is not a bummer is that I slow down. Do less, slow down, prioritize looking at the blue and the green and the brown of the earth and the sky and slow down and take back roads instead of taking big old highways where the wind speed's too high and just change my pace. So, you know, um, also uh, J.D. Fowler in northern, Georgia, northern Atlanta area gave me a really good balaclava for my head and and basically, uh, he didn't know it, but when he handed me that balaclava, you know that the, the the hat that just has a hole here, he saved the whole trip. And he gave me a great tip because my riding gauntlets, which are nice high gauntlets, they weren't quite uh, airtight after the first two weeks of riding, and uh, they were letting in enough air to really chill my hands in the in the colder weather. Because I was riding in the 30s um, on. Uh, 55 roads and my my hands were just starting to get frozen and his tip was simply buy some jersey gloves and put them inside your gauntlets but they were they were tight and I didn't think they'd fit um, I really didn't but I did buy some jersey gloves and I did put them inside and they did fit in there and it solved the problem completely which duh <laughs> but I'm kind of a duh guy and not not afraid to embrace the duh but um, Anyway, Double Kistner Morning, working with uh, knives and plastic and shapes and templates and using my eye and my heart and my mind and my brain over here in the workshop, thinking about a lot of you guys. And um, maybe I'll have some big ideas to talk about sometime, but today I just wanted to check in with everybody, let you know I think of a lot of you, especially thinking of Floyd Howard Pruitt this morning, who's got a nice batch of uh, boards coming out for House of Pawn, Fickles, uh, send in a a few boxes over to him and uh, excited about the uh, the graphic we did on that too. It's a jackalope and um, House of Pawn is in Bradenton, Florida and it is it is reputed to be the best skate shop around. Um, I don't, I don't, it's never safe to say something like that because um, there's just a lot of intensity around skate shops right now. Um, we're all kind of riled up uh, about our industry because there's a lot of collapse that's happening and this is real easy to blame oh look a big idea <laughs> it's really easy to blame the collapse for the collapse but the real the real reason anything like a, an industry starts to collapse is because of foundations isn't it true you build a house with a bad foundation um, it takes it 70 years to collapse and um, you're mad about the collapse and you know really it's the it's the stonemasons that really were your problem in the beginning and uh, I'm excited because I feel like we've maybe we've come on some of the secrets of the masons and we've uh, we've figured out some things that really do work really well in skate uh, to support skateboarders with quality and value and inspiration that really fits their fits the bill for their uh, for their lives, because skateboarding is a vehicle for our lives. And uh, I hope you all have a, a really good day. I hope you're safe, and I hope you're, he you're healthy and well-fed and not too hot and not too cold. All right, kids and big kids, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. I'm gonna get back to work here. Thanks for spending time with me. Have a great day.